All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to rebuild your Craftsman Ratchet. Now, these are the USA models, and usually they particularly go with 44808, which is the one that I'm doing, and the 44811, which is the other one I'm doing. I'm using the Craftsman Rebuild Kits that you can get from Sears. Now, mind you, not all Sears are still open. There's only a few of them around, so there's a limited supply on parts. But what makes it cool is that this is how they honored their lifetime warranty. If they couldn't fix your ratchet, you got a new one, or else they would just give you a refurbished ratchet, or they would fix it on the spot. I have a couple of these rebuild kits that I use to keep it going, because, you know, why not? And when it does all in all break, I will have to surrender to Lowe's and get my own ratchet if I can't find the parts anymore. But these parts are readily available and you can buy them off Amazon for about $25, $30. Or you can get them on other off-site sites that manufacture them for around $15 to $20. Now, it's very easy to tear these apart, which we'll dig right into in just a moment, but hopefully you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for me, and don't forget to comment. Now I'm going to open up a kit for these ratchets. Mind you, the new ratchets that you get from China are not compatible with these ratchets. They have a slightly different Paul design, as well as a slightly different switch design. Slightly higher, so just you, you just can't interchange them, sadly. But we're going to open up this kit, and I'm going to show you exactly the components that come inside of it, and then we're going to reassemble and disassemble them one of these ratchets. So stick around, it'll be fun. Your typical ratchet repair kit, if you go to your local Sears, will come with all new components for the inside as well as a new switch and pawl. Now, this is typically what it would look for. It will have the number, a refurbished sticker to put on it because the manufacturers like to put that on there so they can log which ones come through. And it will tell you which compatible models it's with. On the back side, it just shows you the diagram of how everything goes together. But for what we're doing, we're going to be using this one here, and I'm going to open this one up and show you all the components that are inside before we rebuild it. We're going to just pour it out. Oh, you see the little ball? There's the ball. Uh, we get a new spring here. We have a new gear, and it's slightly different because it's got the little notch to push out. We've got the switch, a new C-clip. There's the ball bearing that sits on top of this spring. And then here is the back plate. Everything goes like right in here. So let's get to rebuilding it. Somebody asked me about this one the other day, the uh, the Craftsman Next Gen series. You can still get them, but they're just not USA made. I have a vise here, the Craftsman vise as well. I'm gonna show you exactly what explained to me on how to repair the ratchet so you at least know what you need to do. Now you can buy the kits on eBay, but he let me have mine back so I can specifically show you the process. Pulling this down. We're going to open the vise up. You're going to want something sturdy to hold it in place. There we go. And I, I don't want to break my ratchet. So there we go. Let's pull this down just slightly so you can see. Use a pair of snap ring pliers and stick them inside the hole like so. What you're gonna do is compress the snap ring on the inside. Okay, snap ring, finally, out. Okay, so the first thing is to remove the snap ring that this whole piece comes out as one unit. There it is. Then we have the switch. Just like that then we can pull this whole assembly out so there's the pieces there's the switch and then the ball just like that and that's every piece inside of this ratchet and then to reassemble this ratchet there's also a spring right here I'm going to remove it from the vise and carefully, if you can see that little spring right there, I'm going to put the ball in to hold it in right like that. So if you can see the ball is inside of the ratchet, we're going to take a pen cap or something just because we have to compress and hold the ball down. So compressing this ball 
You do not want to lose the ball. Okay. I'm going to try this. This is where, to give you guys an angle, I'm going to compress the ball down, take the new switch, slide it in, just like this. There we go. That ball is seated. For this piece here, the switch, we're going to carefully push out a little bit, tuck this inside, you push it out just a little bit, push this in. Oop. Did I mess up the ball? No, I didn't. You want to be careful of the placement of where you're putting it in and that ball because you don't want to drop the ball out. There we go. Then slide everything in. And the mechanism is intact. Sweet. Now all there's left to do is to take the new ratcheting mechanism, stick it in like that, Stick some white lithium grease in there or grease or something. Stick this back on the new cover because this is going to be painfully challenging. I'm going to stick it back in the vise. Tighten the vise down so it doesn't move. Take the new snap ring with your snap ring pliers. Press the snap ring. And this is just a standard snap ring. If it does break, you can go to the hardware store and get one. Compress it in. Careful, these things tend to shoot out sometimes. Just work it in there. Little by little, we can get it in. There we go. And the ratchet works again. We've got a new switch. And there we go. That's how you rebuild those ratchets. It's kind of a cool process because you can rebuild these. They're so simple to the point where you can do that. Other ones are more challenging, like this one here. This one's a Stanley Black & Decker Craftsman. This one is a True Craftsman. And there's slight differences. I mean, one being that it's not USA made and one's polished chrome, which I kind of like. But even just the weight, because this feels like a casted part instead of a forged part, and the overall sound. But also, I mean, what it is, tools are tools, right? If it gets the job done, why does it matter? So here's the little demonstration I got to show you. Hopefully this helped. As normal, hopefully you found this video somewhat helpful and it's used to be used as a reference point for if you do tear apart your ratchet. Now, when you do take that C-clip off, you really want to be careful as that thing can be under a lot of load and be flown up into the air and hit you. I mean, I have a scrape on these glasses because I was doing something and all of a sudden the snap ring hit me in the face and bounced off my glass. But other than that, I mean, it's really simple. So hopefully it helped. If you haven't already, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and check out my channel content. I have car videos, other videos, camera videos, everything in between. It's just an all mishmash thing. So hopefully you enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, stay safe, and uh, hopefully normal life will return.